Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, and welcome to World of Warships for our regular dockyard coverage events. So, this one's gonna be a week behind, but um, that is to be expected, as I've been pretty busy uh, lately. Um, busy as a cat on a hot tin roof, as we might say in uh, Midwest slang or Southern slang in the US. So um, today, besides um, those opening comments, uh, we're going to check out the dockyard event, uh, the construction of the ship, check out the rewards, uh, starter packs, um, and some tips and advice. Um, and I'm also going to be looking at the uh, WOWS wiki on it as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let's see. First, we need to check out the dockyard event itself. Um, so what is the dockyard? The dockyard event takes you th uh, through the phases of building a ship and rewards you with tier 10 uh, Lucian upon completing those phases. The shipbuilding uh, process comprises of 35 phases. You can progress through shipbuilding phases by completing dockyard combat missions or spending doubloons. You can obtain Lucian only upon completing any five phases or more by spending doubloons. So, um, you will need to pick up at least purchase five phases with doubloons uh, IRL monies uh, if you do uh, plan to pick up this ship. If you continue to complete dockyard combat missions after you've built Lucian, you will receive 250 steel instead of uh, each additional phase. So let's say you bought 10 phases um, and you grind all the combat mission dockyard combat missions. Um, and then you play for uh, continue grinding through all that, then you'll get five additional, so that would mean five times 250, meaning you'd have um, 1,250 still. Starter packs, purchase starter packs as a discount to obtain rewards. In complete the shipbuilding phases required to build tier 10 Lucian, you'll not be able to purchase the starter packs after completing four shipbuilding phases by progressing through docker combat missions. Well-deserved rewards. You'll obtain a reward for each shipbuilding phase. By progressing through the shipbuilding phases, you will also obtain special rewards such as 10,000 coal at phase 8 and 14 days of premium at phase 20. So a little bit of the overview there. Um, let's see, probably the list of the phases you can access here. So if you kind of want to see, uh, follow along with the installation process of the different parts of the ship that will be coming together. I need to make a note, this is on my EU server account because I've already progressed on the NA server, so I just felt it would be best to give you uh, fresh eyes. Uh, and looking at this and checking out uh, the starter packs as well, uh, which we'll do here uh, shortly. So pretty straightforward, and you can even uh, watch the shipbuilding process from the beginning if you like watching how our department does that quite well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look out. Um, let me share with you. Uh, well, I'm gonna save the Wilds Wiki stuff uh, for the end. If I uh, kind of answer the question, uh, do I think the ship's worth it or not uh, for you to go for? It. So uh, let's go ahead and check out the rewards. So as you can see, I've already picked up. You're gonna start off with very um, low rewards. And as you go up, you'll increasingly get uh, better rewards. So if you are a new player in World of Warships, uh, completing a dockyard might be rather difficult for you. And typically I say, just go ahead and skip it if you are a newer player. Uh, if you have been playing for let's say five, six months and you um, have a, you know um, tier five ships uh, of every single tech tree line, um, destroyer submarine, uh, destroyer cruiser and battleship, then I'm like, yeah, you could definitely go for it if you're at least tier five or higher. It tends to help if you have a bit more of the higher tiers. So um, there's some coal there, 10,000, that's the eighth phase. So they kind of have this little special designation there. It's gonna be commander XP, free XP. So as you see, as you're going up, you're gonna be getting even better rewards. Um, they used to not I don't know if they used to do credits in the past, like they had a half million credits before and now they three quarter million credits. Um, and they put a lot more expendable bonuses. Um, but this is a pretty lengthy uh, shipbuilding uh, dockyard phase to have, was this 35 phases uh, in total. So you can see a lot of, of the um, bonus containers as well. More League Commander XP, more Free XP, so that's like 45,000. This should be pretty good if you're a new player and you're wanting to have 14 days of premium, then definitely going for that. 
We're bonus this container, another 10,000 coal, so that's 20,000 coal at this point. Uh, the rare expendable bonuses of each of the four types. Then you get 2 million credits, so that's uh, 2 million, uh, 3 point, uh, three and a quarter million credits now that you're earning with even more elite commander XP again. So we're seeing the repetition of several things to get here again and again. More rare bonuses container, so a lot of economic rewards, and then you have the unique bonuses container in the last stretch of the five. The 15,000 coal, so that's 35,000 coal. 4,000 research bro points, 2,000 steel, and then the Lucian uh, itself. Um, so let's go ahead and just read about the ship. So from 1949 through 1965, a scientific and technical support program was in effect between the USSR and um, People's Republic of China. I think that's how it goes. Under this program, among other things, the Soviets shared with the, blue, uh, the blueprints of promising warships with China. In particular, China received technical documentation on the Project 41 destroyer. While China didn't build any ships of this project in its original form between 1968 and 1987, they built uh, 15 uh, 051 class, Luda class missile destroyers that were based on the Soviet uh, Project 41. So let's go ahead and now look at the starter packs. So some details here. So there's two. Um, options you can get and I'm going to talk about the increased cost of the shipbuilding phases um, compared to previous uh, dockyard phases or dockyards in general. Uh, smooth sailing so this is the minimal amount and um, so this is the five shipbuilding phases uh, so that's for 7,000 doubloons um, so if you waited to buy these later so you go 1,950 times five it's going to cost you 9,750 doubloons so you're saving, excuse me, 2,750 doubloons by buying the starter pack if you intend to pick up the ship. Um, and you're gonna wanna pick this up because the starter packs will be available until you complete the first four shipbuilding phases and then they become not available. Um, which, I, I mean, honestly, I think they could lengthen it a little, like maybe wait till sixth or seventh phase. Um, so they're trying to make you um, decide within the first week of grinding the dockyard, hey, make a decision now, are you gonna spend the money or not? If not, it's going to cost you additional 2,700 doubloons later on. Then you have 10 ship building phases known as the full ahead uh, for 11,000 doubloons. So if you went 1,950 times 10, you'd be spending uh, actually 19,500 doubloons if you just bought 10 regular phases. So you are saving money by picking up the smooth sailing full ahead, assuming that you still have access to this since this is a week after the dockyard has already begun. So just some information there. Now, in regards to the shipbuilding phases in general, I have a bone to pick here. Um, I did reference it in when I covered the update 12.7 article. This is the most per uh, phase a cost uh, if you buy a shipbuilding phase after the starter packs or just one phase. In the past, it's floated between 1,500 doubloons to 1,750 doubloons. So they've increased it uh, by 200 doubloons. Uh, note how they didn't make it the big 2,000, so you, you say 50 doubloons in that regard. So I'm wondering if this, they're using a lot of rhetoric in the game lately um, of it being, oh, well, it's um, our economic inflation in the game and we need to do cut back and costs, so we don't have to cost increase, all these things, I don't, doesn't make sense to me. So I mean, even doc, the, was it the uh, Puerto Rico? I think that was 1,750 a phase. Marlboro, I don't remember if it's 1,500 or 1,750, um, but 1,950. Um, so I'm wondering, the only reason I could think is that Wargaming is like, this is a tier 10 ship, so it's more valuable. So uh, we're gonna make 1,950, but they didn't do that for Puerto Rico as an example. So this is um, a thumbs down for me in terms of uh, having an increased cost. Even other World Warships content creators didn't catch uh, that they increased this uh, when they were covering a um, discussion of this. Now, uh, so what is the approach I would recommend? Well, if you really want the ship, uh, then you're going to want to pick up, If in terms of saving, saving money, you're going to want to pick up uh, the starter pack, uh, smooth sailing. Um, otherwise, you will be paying that additional, what did I say, 2,750 doubloons later on. So. Starting off with the smooth sailing starter bundle is the best. 
even if you just now started on the dockyard, you're totally fine. Um, even if you just started this past weekend, uh, you're okay. But if you already progressed past phase four, which I have, I think, on my NA account, uh, then you can no longer buy uh, either of those starter packs. So do be uh, mindful of that. Now, last um, time, uh, they bundled this uh, some of your shipbuilding phases into the battle pass. So it was actually worth buying the battle pass because um, that was you got I think two or three shipbuilding phases as a final reward. Um, and so you got all the rewards of the battle pass. You got three shipbuilding phases, and then you had to buy two individual phases uh, to pick up the Dyson. Um, so it was the same exact cost, um, but you picked up all the rewards from the premium the battle path um, or battle pass. So it worked out really well. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll just answer the question now. Do I think Lucian is worth it? Well, let me go ahead and read you some information that they have uh, on this ship in the WoWs wiki. So maybe I can just change the picture here in the background of something different so it's not so uh, boring. Um, so I'm just going to read the overview and the pros and cons. So the overview is, is is this is a tier 10 Pan Asian destroyer Lucian uh, provides an experience that is in sharp contrast to her tech tree counterparts. The tech tree destroyers have smoke screens with average duration and cooldown times, torpedo reload boosters, and below average firepower. Lucian is heavily gun focused with a consumable kit that is focused on defensive play at the cost of her torpedo power. Now in terms of the pros and cons, the pros is that they list the extremely high rate of fire Above average HE and extremely good AP damage per minute salvos. Um, I think compared to other tier 10 destroyers, Lucian actually ranks really high on this. Above average AP penetration values, excellent ballistics at all ranges, so you have a rather flatter shell arcs in decent shell travel time. 360 degree turret rotation with fast turret traverse, so you get two turrets, one on the bow, one on the stern. Stealthy torpedoes. Excellent concealment, a 5.5 hydroacoustic search, so they're very similar to low Yang's 5.5 kilometer hydroacoustic search. High levels of health pool restoration. So this ship uh, gets a, the, I think it's, I don't remember what they technically named it. Does it uh, show me here? I'd probably have to look on, no, I have it on something else. Um, a, a long, uh, well, let's just go through the cons. Maybe they mention it here. Uh, low alpha damage. Well, on the guns or the torps, it didn't say. Long torpedo reload. Mediocre AA battery will not deter carrier strikes. ASW armament with low damage and staggered to drop pattern. So it sounds like it's kind of a, takes longer for them to drop. So not as uh, concise ASW strikes. Slow top speed and sluggish maneuverability. Um, that almost sounds like the Lambos Katsonis. <laughs> No smoke generator and engine boost, so that is definite a pain. So if you get caught out, you are not going to be able to disengage and go dark. So that's why I think they emphasize it's more of a uh, defensive play. Long repair party duration time and cooldown time. So this is the um, what you have on the Sevastopol, uh, I believe. So it has a long action time, um, but it also has a long cooldown time. So you can't pop the heels as quickly as maybe you would on a kid or Havarosk. Uh, something like uh, that nature. Now overall, they say the Lucian is a comfortable tier 10 destroyer that is easy for uh, to use for players. So take that information as you will. Now in terms of my thoughts on this ship, there's nothing that really stands out to me and excites me about the ship. Um, I don't know if it's just that's how I'm feeling about the game is late, <laughs> or if that's just generally how I feel more about uh, the current dockyard, that this is one I'm personally, I'm just gonna skip. Um, I did pick up Dyson last time because it worked out well with the battle pass, um, but this time um, I'm just going to skip this. Um, now there are two things favorable uh, if you do pick up uh, the Lucian. One is you have another tier 10 ship, a premium ship in the game uh, for your uh, War uh, World Warships anniversary events, uh, snowflake events such as uh, Christmas time. Uh, so that's really beneficial to have. Um, and I guess a second reason tied to the Christmas event would be, you know, if you're trying to pull more other ships uh, from those containers in the game, uh, you already have uh, Lucian out of the way. But as far as I know, they haven't included dockyard ships in the Santa, like Mega Santa uh, Crate, Big Santa uh, Crate containers and stuff. The third reason is the trade-in. So the dockyard events have a very high value in trade-in. 
Um, essentially, if they keep it the same as they did this last trade-in event, it would be this ship would be worth 17,500 doubloons for you to trade in on another ship. So you could technically look at it as I spent 7,000 doubloons and I spent time grinding and picking up this ship. I'm going to trade this ship in at the next uh, trade-in event that they do in the game. Uh, if Lucian is a ship that you can trade in, to then receive a another ship that's maybe something similar worth to Turpitz's Terp worth that's like 11,500 doubloons. So then you're saving the balloon money there if you want to go that kind of roundabout way. Um, and that way, you know, if you really are like you uh, want to trade this ship in for something else, then you technically save money that way. Or um, you might pick up this ship and you like love playing it or maybe you hate playing it. And then probably in a future trade in event, you could just simply trade it away. Um, so you're not bound to this ship because likely in the next maybe the second or third trade in event uh, this ship would be available um, but overall um, This ship because it's focused more on that uh, the guns um, it is um, How do I put this? Um, what is the word they use they use the term slow top speed and sluggish maneuverability you know, if this is a gunboat and stuff, I'd rather just take my steel and just have Ragnar. And I do have Ragnar, and I like playing that ship, and you get the 7.5 kilometer radar. Uh, granted, you don't have torpedoes, uh, you don't have a hydroacoustic search, but this ship doesn't have a radar. So let's go look at the combat missions. Uh, so I can just give you some general uh, advice and tips. Um, so we'll go into here, go into dockyard. So you can see I was playing uh, yesterday. On Sunday, we had our community ops day uh, that I streamed here on Twitch. Um, so I did get some progress made uh, towards uh, completing at least four of the six uh, ones in the first uh, mission pack. Right now, as this video is, I guess tomorrow when it goes up, you have 62 days left for these missions to be available. So you have two months, so still plenty of time. Um, so when you're looking at these, just uh, you want to be uh, paying attention to uh, two things. Well, the main thing is your completion criteria. So what game modes, battle modes, can you complete this specific combat mission task in? And then the second thing is you're going to want to pay attention to um, is it ship specific, uh, class specific, right? So some of these... Uh, they're not class specific. It's always going to be tier 5 through tier 10 or super ship. Um, but some of these are going to be class specific. So you can see submarines, destroyers, battleships, aircraft carriers, uh, right? Um, so that is something you do have to be mindful and aware of when you're doing this. So always check that out first. So, I mean, you can see, oh, uh, get 950 ribbons. Um, let's see, I need to do that. I can do any of these game modes. Uh, but it's aircraft carrier, uh, and so they're going to say tier six and up, right, for aircraft carriers because you don't have tier five aircraft carriers in World Warships. Um, something new uh, to also be mindful is operations. Uh, inc they've included more operations in combat missions now, um, but they have your performance achieved and operations is taken into account. So let's say you got uh, 400 ribbons, only they're only going to count 200 ribbons uh, to go towards uh, your aircraft carrier progression of 950 ribbons. So these will tend to get more lengthy in terms of what you have to do as time goes on. Um, nowhere near as bad as the first dockyard event, um, the first Puerto Rico dumpster fire event. Uh, moving on here into the second chain. So you know, pretty straightforward, get to get 20 torpedo hits or citadel hits. So, you know, these are very easily doable in co-op, right? You can just run some co-op real quick. 16,000, uh, anything uh, with potential damage, so 16 million potential damage, that's really going to take, um, most players will just take battleships, that's the best way, you know, maybe you take your, if you have a GK, or you take your Kremlin, uh, something Russian, something tanky, that's going to take a lot of punishment, uh, it could take like Stalingrad, it could be Moskva, I mean, even with my Salem, um, I've broken 3 million potential damage with that ship, uh, Conqueror would be another good ship. I've had uh, over 3 million potential damage games in Conqueror before. Um, so something that uh, has a really good heal, uh, you can avoid. Uh, if you're really sweaty, you could even do some gunboat destroyers. So something like uh, Ragnar, Havarosk, Delny. Um, yeah, gunboat destroyers. Uh, Sherman possibly as, as well. 
Uh, so that's really where the potential damage is going to kick in. Uh, when you see main battery hits, it means you probably want to take a higher, uh, faster reloading DPM machine. So maybe this is where Hurugamo steps in. Uh, Sherman again. Typically, a destroyer is going to have a faster rate of fire. And these are main battery hits, so pay attention. This isn't sec like main battery and secondary battery hits. It's only main battery hits. So a battleship would take you a very long time to progress in this. And you can see it's not ship class specific. It's just tier 5 through uh, tier 10 and super ship. Credits, uh, when you need to earn credits, take your premium ships uh, if you have any. Um, you can typically do this pretty naturally will progress if you're working on these uh, other ones. But you can see that this is ship class specific. So uh, if I have to earn 5.2 million credits, then I'm going to be taking um, probably uh, your tier 9 premiums. If you have a tier 9 premium, these are the best credit earners in the game. Uh, so I'll be taking those. Uh, otherwise, you can take other premium ships, you know, tier 8, 7, 6, I mean, even 10s. Um, super ships don't, aren't, don't earn as well and best of credits. So just play more premium ships. You know, if you're uh, take those uh, economic bonuses you can put on your ship. Um, the expendable ones help you along. So, you know, I might play uh, even operations, right? Um, but again, your progress is going to be halved. Um, so that's just something you have to be mindful of. Because sometimes I grind credits and ops, but I have to be mindful that uh, my progress would be halved. Although they don't have it for these specific ones. So I see the orange dot there. I wonder if that's intentional or accident or, yeah, purpose. Hmm, interesting. Let's see how that looks like. And you can see this one's going to uh, is already available. Second uh, chain. Sorry, I think I, earlier in the video I said only the first one was available, but it's uh, the first two are. Uh, the third one becomes available, is already available today as you're watching this video. Spotted ribbons. So, you know, take a aircraft carrier or take a step more stealth-oriented destroyer to pick up your spotted ribbons. You know, this is where I normally... On this one, I would just hop in my uh, aircraft carrier and co-op and spot all the bots. 100 torpedoes means you're going to take something that's good, good hydroacoustic range. So maybe you've got uh, your German destroyers, uh, Friesland, Grotigan, um, Low Yang, something that's going to easily pick up the torpedoes. Uh, XP, um, so this doesn't say base XP, just XP in general. So maybe you're uh, grinding a ship and you take your rare or unique XP bonus to help get through that. Um, you know, defended, captured, assisted capture. A little difficult to do in co-op. It is possible, but you're basically wanting to try to stay out of the caps um, to get more defended ribbons uh, versus the captured or assisted, right? So you can flip the cap and then you're defending it. Let the enemy destroyer step on, cruiser, battleship, and then you can farm them. So some things you're going to see are pretty repetitive here um, as you go along. I'm just trying to give you a general idea uh, of these as you go through. Um, yeah, so cruisers receive 21 million potential damage. So I didn't even mention Petropavlovsk. You know, that would be a um, Russian cruiser you could take for that as well. Um, spotting damage with the aircraft carrier. You know, carriers do that really easily. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, again, XP doesn't say base XP. So if you're grinding a ship line, just stack on those uh, expendable bonuses. You can see seven and a half million credits, not ship class tied. Uh, so you can do that in any of the game modes. Again, I don't see the um, uh, orange icon on the operations. So I wonder if they are not able to prevent that for some reason in terms of the credit earnings um, tied to combat missions or if Wargaming is just being nice or if it's just pure accident that they forgot to put the orange uh, uh, label uh, on those. Um, defended, win eight battles. You know, you could easily just do this really fast in co-op, right? It's, and take seven, ten minutes doing a quick co-op and randoms. You know, it's kind of RNG based on the matchmaking. Destroyed ribbons. You know, you could also, if I do, when I tend to do these dockyard missions in co-op, um, if it's just get win eight battles, like I'm gonna take Marceau. I take my Marceau. And I wipe out my whole flank and I kill three ships and team gets the win, right? Um, Marceau tends to be my go-to dockyard uh, uh, co-op ship or it could be even Kleber. 
Um, because Clubaris torpedoes reload faster. They just don't have a clumber as long as range. 50 destroyer torpedo hit ribbons. So, yeah, destroyer's going to take a while. So, you know, maybe you take your Shimikaze, uh, your more torpedo focused ships. So that would be pretty rough. Or you have some of these um, in one battle do something really good. So, one battle earn 2,000. Uh, HP of damage to ships. So if I'm doing a, a damage farming game, Conqueror, uh, St. Vincent, um, I can do this in my uh, Salem, uh, maybe Ohio. Um, something that you're going to just set a lot of fires on a lot of different ships. Um, you can easily do that. And, and as well, you, you play your carry ships, your ships you feel really comfortable with. So 2,400 base XP. Um, you know, so again, I do Salem, I do Des Moines, I would do Ohio. Um, I would do Daring, um, St. Vincent, Conqueror. Uh, ships feel pretty comfortable. Radar Minotaur for myself. It's a very sweaty uh, lifestyle, but I like it. Uh, so here's the base XP kicking in. So, you know, most players, maybe you get around 1,500 base XP, maybe close, maybe if you have a really good game, closer to 2,000, but generally you're around 1,500. So co-op is going to take you a long time to get as much base XP reward in co-op versus... Um, Random battles. Here you can see they actually removed Brawl. Uh, so you do need to be mindful, uh, again, of the completion criteria uh, and what they are allowing you to do uh, versus not allowing you to do. So it's kind of funny that they don't allow you to do that in subs, but they allow you to do that uh, in other classes. But probably maybe subs aren't allowed in that uh, iteration of Brawls. So the last one, you can see uh, a lot of things going on here. Um, set, setting fires, so you know, you're Ships are going to have good fire setting chance. So, again, you know, Thunder, St. Vincent, Conqueror. Um, could even be Dunkirk. I'm oh, sorry, not Dunkirk. Um, Duke of York um, and the other counterparts that I'm spacing the name of. Uh, 118 battles. 200 destroyed. 100 destroyed. Uh, torpedo hits. So, Sword Citadels, again, some of these Citadels, uh, you can easily, you know, I take my Des Moines, I take my Salem um, into co-op, and you can farm those uh, quite quickly. Yeah, so um, we'll go back into the dockyard. So this is some general uh, information on that. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to say. So um, there are other World Warships content creators who've already covered the ship, they have the ship. Um, so you can go check out their playstyle. My goal of this video is just to try to help you give you some beneficial and helpful information if you do decide to pursue this ship. I'm sorry that it wasn't in a more timely manner. I've just been really busy with a lot of things in life lately. Um, so it is what it is sometimes. My content might not always be super timely. I try to be intentional with that, but they had a lot of things that happened last week in World Warships I was trying to cover and get out between the trade-in and uh, yeah, there's other things in the game. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I would appreciate it. And let me know your thoughts on this dockyard. Are you going to get the Lucian? Do you already have it? What are your thoughts? Or is this just going to be a dockyard that you're going to skip like myself uh, in terms of picking up the ship? Still grind these uh, rewards, you know, um, by playing the combat missions. So until next time, take care.